Hello, everyone. Today, to be reacting to another Zorgan Jari clips. So the guest here is Zoe Diaz. It's a comedian to like Zorgan. Uh, let me read the title: Zoe Diaz and Zorgan both uh, run in with sabotators. In the title is a little weird. And why don't we check it out then? All right. Try to make a move on you. When oh you yeah. Were when you were a kid. Yeah, a couple times. From five to how old? Jeez. Um, the the scariest one was when I was thirteen. Thirteen. That's really young. When I was 13, I was in Boston. One time it happened before, but a librarian saved me. I was like eight. I was in San Francisco, and uh, I was really into monster books back then. I was into monster movies and monster books, and I was looking at these books, and this creepy yeah. dude came over to me, and he said, you, you like monster books? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, well, I have uh, monster books in my car. Do you want to come see them? I said, okay. okay. So I, you know, I was really? eight years old. I was dumb. Yeah, never go to the someone's car, especially strangers. Started walking behind him, and the librarian screams out, "Joseph, you get away from him! He just got out of jail!" I'm like, "Oh my God!" Jeez. And I ran, and I ran. Well, the librarian pretty much set him. Ran to the librarian, and she hugged me, and I was crying. It was very scary. When I was very 13, scary. I got in a car with a guy who was freezing out. Bus wasn't coming. Mm. I had the basketball. I was at St. Michael's gym. I got on Kennedy Boulevard. Next thing you know, fucking. Uh, there's no number one bus. I'm there fucking an hour and a half and ten below, you know. Guy pulls up. You want to ride? Yeah, I get in there. Jeez. So he's in the stranger's car. I still remember how he acted. Like, from the beginning, from the minute I got in, something wasn't right. His energy wasn't right. And mm. he thought he had mm. he thought he had prey. You know, he was right. all hot and sticky. He was like, we were, we were 18. We were taking a girl back to our apartment. You know, we, we, we were kind of clumsy. He was clumsy. And at the light, he went for the ball. He goes, you like playing basketball? He went for the ball, and he touched my dick. Like he Jeez. slipped. And said, oh, oh and Kevin goes, Spacey. Do you, do you like it? And I was like, do I fucking like it? And Joe. That was very, very creepy. Broke and the door opened. It was like God opened the fucking door, and I just got out and ran. Oh. He kept saying, come back. I was just teasing you. Come on, I'll give you a ride. Jeez. I was already home. I was already at the top of Schutz and Bark. Mm. What did I give a fuck? But that was basic. And I always think about that. Like, why didn't people approach me? I, I knew today, looking back, I still remember three guys. I remember a high school teacher that would come on as a High school teacher. Guru. And I found that. And I always thought a little weird about him. Not married, you know. And then years ago, somebody said, yeah, he was sucking kids' dicks at the Jeez. shit. Mm. I had a guy slow play me at a... There were predators everywhere some years back in the day. Lake. There was a guy that used to uh, run around the lake and talk to us when we were fishing. We were probably like 13. Me and mm. my friend Josh in particular, we would go to this one lake that was in our uh, town. And uh, we'd fish there all the time. And this dude would come by all the time and visit. He was always friendly. Start off real normal. What are you guys up to? Catching some fish? Like, southern accent. Seemed like yeah. a, an old gentleman. And then a couple times he came when it was just me. And mm. then he just sat down next to me, talked to me. And I was naive. I was 13. I just thought he was a real nice guy. Like, almost like an older brother type figure. He's going to give you good advice. He talked about cool shit. He w was okay. a teacher. He got kicked out of uh, his position for some unfair reason he wouldn't really be specific about it but he said you know they didn't like the way he taught why are they most of them school teachers and so anyway this dude just becomes my friend like nice and slow nice and slow brings me lunch i even went to his house once mm. and then one day i am uh fishing and he's drunk and he tells me he loves me jeez and i said i think i said something like yeah, i really like you too he goes you know, there there can't be love without sex. And I remember thinking, what? That went very weird, real quick. Whoa. Like, what did he just, what happened? And then I remember thinking, what a dummy I am. I thought this guy just liked me. He was, I was his buddy. Like he's going to teach me things. He just likes teaching people. He's just really smart. Then I had my hand on a knife. I had a uh, Swiss Army knife from them little red plastic ones. You know the ones with the can. Yeah, they have all the kind the of shit. And screw. all I was thinking is, I had I put it in my hand, 
in my pocket. Like I held on to it, and I remember thinking, "God damn it! I hope I don't have to fucking try to use this." Because I was thinking, it's like he was, he was a yeah. big guy. You know, I was thirteen. I don't know what I weighed, 120 pounds or something. I'm like, fuck, this guy might beat the shit out of me and rape me here in the woods. Like, he was bigger than me, and he was always jogging. You know, he wasn't in bad shape. Jeez. And he, uh, I told him to get the fuck away from me, and he told me to not be upset, and then I left. I got away. He didn't chase me. I, You know, he didn't want to be violent. He wanted to trick me into fucking him. He, wanted, he didn't want to rape me. Okay. He wanted to trick me into fucking him. I got real lucky that that yeah, some really weird story. That yeah. was the case. But then years later, I got a letter from him at my house. That was creepy, because it showed up in the mailbox like he had figured out where I moved to, and sent me a letter. Yes. I was like, Whoa! And it was like real, like friendly and professional, like a real professor, like a scholar. I don't even remember if he ever apologized. But it was real weird. It was like, ooh, I dodged that bullet. How many guys that are like that but aren't nice? They just want to get you close and then rape you. That's much more likely, probably. Jeez. That is some horrific shit, man. With Puerto Rican Nelson, I went to his house. That's like, his name? That's what we called him. He was Puerto Rican and his name was Nelson. <laughs> okay. And he lived on Given That Terrace and he lived next to the Otinos but in the back. And I think he raped guys with a black dude. Like there was a, a black friend of his that would come over there and then they'd give you beer oh. and all that shit. So he took you in as a, you like pussy. Okay. Type of the guy knows how to trick young men. Like you were 12, he's like, you wanna see some good pussy? And then that's how it started. You and then they bring in, you over there? You go in and he'd start with the porn first. Whew. Yeah, bring your buddies anytime you want. And it was a porn, and then he would get us nickel bags of weed. He started, we'll, I'll get you weed. And then he introduced our black friend to him. And his, and his black friend just looked fucking retarded, like his afro was cut weird. He had <laughs> weird hair. And I remember him distinctively speaking about the Rock of Gibraltar, how he had just come back from Africa. And we were young kids, like, wow. And then uh, once he showed us the porn, it came out like a week later. Somebody said, bro, that dude's no good. Uh, asked, what's his name? He went over to the other and he asked him if he could suck his dick. <laughs> so we're like, what do we do here? Do we call the cops or do we tell Carmine? We're like, no, let's just play the guy because he was selling us weed. He was like a bartender in the city and would sell us weed. And then he pursued the porno thing with us. He's like, you guys don't understand, you know? And then he talked us into... Yeah, that was just plain creepy. Like, I'm going to fuck my girlfriend, come over and listen. And we would come over there at night and listen. He would leave the window open, and it was his girlfriend and him fucking, and she would be saying, give, it, give me milk, daddy. <laughs> give me milk, daddy. And we, like, get creeped out and ran out of there one day. Okay. And then one day we actually fucking went back. Then he'd be... He got normal. I think with the misunderstanding with the one guy, he got normal. Like, we, somebody checked him. Okay. And he got normal. And then, like, the next summer was when he would come out and play football with us with a robe on with no underwear. <laughs> with just his dick out. And, he could, and we're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, he went to desperate measures oh. of perversion. And I think Mrs. Zanotti said something to him. You can't be doing that around here with your dick out. And he's like, no, no, I just want to get exercise or something. Like he told us something weird. And that was the end of that. <laughs> the stories were hilarious, especially the last one. And there were some very weird people. These days, we have to be more careful about the strangers, especially the young kids and the boys really get tricked. Let me know down in the comments what other videos would you like me to react to next. If you want to check out all my recommendations, if you're interested in this video, check out the affiliate links below, which can get a small commission, but no extra cost to you. I don't hesitate to comment what you thought about this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and get more subscribers. Like the video too to help out YouTube to recommend this video to many people around the world and share this video with your friends, family and relatives and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.